Well, good morning, Fairview family. Um, things are a little different around here these days, uh, but welcome to small group lesson for March the 22nd. You may have recently noticed uh, that Brother Matt released a video outlining our digital and relational strategy for the time being, and this is one component of that strategy. We're encouraging small groups to get together in homes and in classrooms and uh, around the, the barbecue pit, whatever suits you best and whatever makes you feel the most comfortable. But uh, we encourage you to get together to fellowship, to get together to study, uh, to just hang out and uh, during this time. But one component of our strategy is me releasing these videos once a week. I'll be going through our lesson, through our Explore the Bible curriculum. Today we're in lesson four uh, in the book of Romans. And uh, so we're going to be doing this each week. So I encourage you to gather with a small group, with a family, maybe just by yourself. But, but I encourage you to get together with someone and, and read through with me, to study with me, to think through uh, these concepts with me each week. And, uh, and I'm going to kind of be your guide. I, I normally stop and ask questions when I teach. I ask people to look stuff up. And I'm going to do that some today. So there will be some moments during this time where I'm going to ask you to pause, to talk to each other, to look stuff up, to read things. And and ask you to come back and we'll go through it a little bit together each each time. So uh, let's dive in today. Uh, before we do that, I want to ask you to pause me for the first time. Pause me and uh, and pray and ask the Lord to reveal himself to you, to reveal his word to you, and, uh, and then come back and join me in just a moment. Okay, so before we dive in, I want to challenge you with this quote from Billy Graham. Think on this for just a second. He said in his book, The Journey, Faith isn't pretending our problems don't exist, nor is it simply bond optimism. Faith points us beyond our problems to the hope we have in Christ. Now, our days seem to be filled with problems, now more than ever it seems, but we have one problem that we can't fix on our own. I can't fix my problem. You can't fix this problem. Nobody can fix this problem on their own. And that is simply our sin problem. We all have this problem and we can't fix it. Today's lesson, though, the point of the lesson is that all who accept the gospel by faith in Christ are justified before the Father. In other words, our sin problem is fixed through faith in Jesus Christ. And so that's what we're going to dive into in Romans chapter 3, starting in verse 21, going through chapter 4, verse 1. Three. So we've been studying the book of Romans the past couple of weeks, and uh, Paul has uh, spent a major portion of the first of the book to uh, to focus on the fact that everyone falls short of God's standard, and uh, we we fall short of God's righteousness. And in chapter three, Paul moves past the problem onto a solution. And he explains that only through faith in Christ can a person find God's grace. To cover our shortcomings. Today we're going to break up the lesson using three phrases. Through faith, in Jesus, and for all people. So let's investigate that first point. We'll, we'll start by reading Romans chapter 3 verse 21 through 24. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been revealed. Attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ. To all who believe, since there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Paul has been pointing out in previous verses that the law exposes our sin. In verse 21, he says that outside the law, apart from the law, God has revealed His righteousness. Sometimes people think if they do enough good, God will love them more. If they do enough good, God will cover up the bad stuff they've done. But Paul says it's not in keeping the law that we find righteousness. Yes, the Old Testament and the law point to, they attest to, the scripture says, the righteousness of God. But we don't attain it through the law. How do we attain it? That's a question for you. Think on that for a second. How do we attain the righteousness of God? Paul says in verse 22, look right there, it's through faith in Christ. Well then, who can attain it? Look in verse 22, all who believe. And why can they attain it? Because there's no distinction. No distinction, well, what's he talking about there? Well, God's righteousness is available to all without distinction because 
We've all sinned. We're all in need of it, so it's available to all of us. Before we go on, um, if you're with someone, pause for a second, or if you're by yourself, pause anyway, and, and think through the, this next question I have for you. Look at verse 24. What word or phrase stands out to you in that verse? How does it address the reality of verse 23? Okay, pause me and I'll see you in a few. Okay, there are many things in that passage that might stick out to you, but what sticks out to me, to me personally, is the freely part. Paul is saying we can't obtain God's righteousness through trying to do good, because in reality we've all missed the mark on God's standard. It's a problem that we, we can't fix. It's only fixable because of what Christ did on the cross, if we place our faith in Him. So, through faith, we find God's righteousness. But let's keep going. Look at the second phrase, in Jesus. Read Romans 3, 25-26. God presented Him as an atoning sacrifice in His blood, received through faith, to demonstrate His righteousness, because in His restraint, God passed over the sins previously committed. God presented Him to demonstrate His righteousness at the present time, so that he would be righteous and declare righteous the one who has faith in Jesus. Now, 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 hang on. Let's slow down a second. You know, if you've been in church a while, you might hear atoning sacrifice, blood, God passed over. Okay, got it, and move on. Or maybe you haven't been in church a lot, and you're like, atoning sacrifice, blood. What what's going on here? Well, let's take a closer look. Let's slow down and take a closer look. First off, this phrase, atoning sacrifice, it actually may be translated differently if you're using uh, a different Bible. Um, it may be translated as the word propitiation. Big word, I know, propitiation. So uh, if you would, pause again. We're going to do a little exercise. I need you to go to the Old Testament and look up some verses and go to the New Testament and look up some verses. I'm going to list them here on the screen for you. So go look those up for me and think about what it means and how it might relate to what we're talking about here. So in Exodus, you read about the mercy seat. And then in the New Testament, uh, you read about Jesus' sacrifice. The word propitiation harkens back to the idea in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, God utilizes animal sacrifices as a means to pass over sin. The blood was placed on the mercy seat, but it had to be done over and over and over again to stall God's judgment. But we learn here in verse 25 and 26 that in Jesus, God made it possible for full forgiveness to come, to come to those who have faith in Christ, and when we do that, we're declared righteous. So through faith in Christ, God's righteousness can be found. But by whom? Well, that's our third phrase, for all people. Let's look at what that means in our scriptures, chapter 3, verse 27 and 28. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By one of works? No. On the contrary, by law of faith. For we conclude that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. So what does this verse say about our need to avoid boasting about our salvation? Uh, well, really, we don't boast because we don't have anything, we don't have anything to boast about. Uh, God did the saving through Christ's work. Well, look now at verse 29 and 31. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too. Since there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. But we then nullify, do we then nullify the law through faith? Absolutely not. On the contrary, we uphold the law. So, so, who is God the God of? Well, all people. Um, so don't boast about salvation because you think you've done something special. Don't boast about salvation because you think you are special. I mean, Paul says here, think, think about Abraham. I mean, that guy has something to boast about, right? If anybody had anything to boast about, I mean, Abraham, sure. So, so let's look here um, at our final set of verses. 
Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. What then will we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, has found? If Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him for righteousness. So why was righteousness credited to Abraham? It's because he believed, not because of what he did, not because he did a bunch of good stuff. So if you had to explain salvation, if you had to explain justification, maybe these three phrases could get you there. It's, uh, it's, it's through faith, not works. It's in Jesus and what he did on the cross. And it's for all people, no matter who you are or what you've done. So I want to challenge you today. Some of you like to journal. Um, I want to challenge you to sit down with a pen this week and, and think about uh, when it was that you first experienced salvation. Uh, what was it like? What was it all about? Um, and I want to encourage you to thank the Lord for that uh, in your writing. Um, and I want to encourage you to this week, maybe you haven't reached the place yet where you uh, you believe that, where you feel like you've uh, you've come to faith in Christ. And I want you to think about, you know, in your journaling, what uh, what questions uh, are holding you back? What what feelings might be uh, holding you back? And so I encourage you to, to write those things out this week and think through those things and find somebody and talk to them about those things, uh, whether, whether it be praise and thanksgiving or whether it be questions and, uh, and just not sure yet. Find somebody to talk to about it. During this time where we are uh, self-quarantining, uh, where we're keeping our distance from people, I encourage you to catch up with one or two folks this week and talk about these types of things. Thanks, and I hope to see you all in person real soon.